Daniel 8 presents a remarkable prophecy known as the 2300 evenings and mornings prophecy, a period that ended in 1844. As this prophetic time frame neared its end, there was a great revival in the study of Bible prophecies, especially those found in Daniel and Revelation. Led by William Miller, a diverse group from various denominations following extensive study, began waiting for Jesus' second coming in 1844. With great zeal, they began disseminating this truth within their churches. But after rejecting this belief, those churches chose to disfellowship the Millerites. When Jesus didn't come at the expected time, a small group kept investigating the Bible. They found additional truths that were rejected or forgotten by mainstream Christianity, such as the heavenly sanctuary, the enduring validity of God's law, and the Sabbath. As they grew, they recognized the importance of formal organization to further God's work. Then, between May 20th and 24, 1863, they convened the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists. By studying the Book of Revelation, they also found that Jesus expected them to enlarge the proclamation of these restored truths, reaching to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. This understanding led the Seventh-day Adventists to reject the Congregationalist system of governance that was embraced by the majority of other Christian denominations. The Congregationalist system of governance seems very appealing at first glance. It offers great independence to the local congregation, allowing each one to operate almost as an autonomous entity without significant organizational, theological, or financial accountability. However, by studying Bible prophecies, Adventist pioneers soon realized that Jesus' commission was so great that it would require highly coordinated efforts fostered by mutual trust and mutual submission. After much study, they also found in the Bible a model that led them to adopt the representative system of governance in which all churches are united in doctrine, planning, and action. Also, financial resources are put together and then equitably distributed. They saw that it was only by uniting human and financial resources that the Holy Spirit would enable them to do more, go faster and farther, and reach the entire planet more rapidly. Because of this missionary commitment, the Adventist Church has work established in 212 out of the 235 countries and areas of the world and the restored truths are preached in 401 languages and dialects. We testify that we trust that God is leading this prophetic movement when we distribute our promise offerings to equally support the mission of our local congregation and regional and international missionary needs. The combined offering plan, endorsed and promoted by the General Conference, recommends that 50 to 60 percent of our total offering should support the missionary work of the local church. 20 to 30 percent should support the regional missionary endeavors of the conference and union, and 20 percent should always support the World Mission Fund, or world budget, providing equitable growth. As we return our tithe and promise offerings, may we put our desires last and God first.